a lot of my viewers, when they see a homebrew project demonstrated, ask, where can I buy it? Can I get a kit? Or is there a circuit board? The answer to all those is no. You actually have to build it yourself. That may not be as scary as you might think. There's a few basic skills that I'll go into on this and later videos. The first skill is you need to be able to build a circuit from a circuit diagram. No printed circuit board or parts placement diagram. You need to do that yourself. In this video, I'll go through the steps that you need to take to build a project just from a circuit diagram. I'll focus on very simple projects. In fact, this video will contain a project that will be useful for various receiver and transmitter projects. The first thing is your choice of projects. Step number one is to choose a sensible project. Not too many parts, maybe 20 or 30 maximum. Preferably all discrete components and, unless you're experienced, probably avoid surface mount for now. Choose a very simple project, maybe one or two transistors, something like a crystal oscillator, an audio amplifier, a signal tracer, a piece of basic test equipment, maybe even a small regenerative receiver. All those things can be fun projects for the beginner. Have a look at a circuit diagram, search the web, take note if people have had difficulties or have had success with a, a design. There's so many to try and if you use something with basic components then if it doesn't work you can easily find another circuit of something fairly similar and keep experimenting with that until you get something that does work. Later on you could graduate to something like this which is a complete HF SSB transceiver for 40 metres. As for circuit boards, I'd avoid a printed circuit board if you can, because once you design an etch it and you need to make changes, then they can be very inflexible. Now something like this is ideal, a small piece about 4 by 5 centimetres, just blank printed circuit board material. If it's not very shiny, just go over it with some sandpaper to make it shiny and accept solder. Another alternative, if you've got a mitre box and a hacksaw, put the board in a mitre box and saw lines, 5 millimetres horizontal and vertical. That will produce a board with pads about 5 by 5 millimetres. You can then use those to support your various component leads. That actually provides quite a robust form of mounting the circuit and you can very easily make changes if you need it. I really recommend this method as a good prototyping and circuit building approach. Looking at the circuit diagram, have a bit of an estimate as to how much circuit board you'll use. Try and make your construction as close to the circuit diagram. If you are a beginning, you might want to draw a diagram on how you are going to mount the components, showing the components, not just their symbols like you get in the schematic diagram, on any good circuit diagram, the input will normally be on the left and the output on the right. So try and orient your components like that. I try and keep component leads relatively short, especially with RF, although that's not so critical with audio. Here's a circuit of a simple HF crystal oscillator that I'd recommend as a first project to build off a circuit diagram. Two transistors, the BC548 in the diagram, but they can be almost any small signal NPN transistor, such as a 2N2222 or 2N3904. Amateur band crystals are on the diagram, 3.58 or 7.159 MHz, but you can use almost any crystal, like 5 or 10 MHz. The culprit's oscillator, the two capacitors in there, 220 picofarad. Um, notice how the P is missing for the one between the emitter and the ground. They can be disc ceramics. Resistors, two 1K resistors. 100K from the base to the collector of the first transistor. 220 between the power supply and the two collectors and 330 ohm between the buffers emitter and the ground. 
As for capacitors, 10 nanofarad for the output capacitor between the emitter of the buffer and the RF output connection and 100 nanofarad for between the collectors and the earth. None of those values are particularly critical. So if you're just to have a small circuit board like this, 4 by 5 centimeters on this side of the board, it's hacksawed into squares, about 5 millimeters or so square, not critical. You could use that to mount the components. You can just have a circuit board like this, unetched, and just mount the earthed part of the components, like the bottom of the crystal, bottom of the 220, 1K, 330 ohm. You solder all those parts to the copper of the circuit board, and you use those components as supports, and you then solder the other components, the floating components, across. And that should provide sufficient mechanical support. Here's the completed crystal oscillator circuit. You'll notice a extra capacitor, a 27 picofarad in series with the crystal. That was added to pull the frequency of the crystal a little bit. A circuit like this is a great first stage for a QRP transmitter or even a direct conversion receiver. Have a look at the circuit, buy or salvage the parts and then test it. Once you've built this circuit, in this case an oscillator, make sure the crystal you've got is one that's a fairly common frequency like 5 or 10 MHz or even um, an amateur frequency like 3.58 or 7.159, 14.318, all those crystals are good. Put it in your circuit, apply power and then try and tune that frequency in on a nearby receiver, preferably with just a short wire put into its antenna socket uh, that's so that you can locally pick up the signal from the oscillator. If it works, then you'll be able to hear a carrier in the receiver. Just disconnect the power from the circuit. In this case, you can use a 9 volt battery or 12 volts from a, a bench power supply. Disconnect that just to prove that it's actually the oscillator that's radiating that signal and not something else in the house. So, once you've done that, give yourself a pat on the back. Congratulations, you've built your first circuit from a schematic diagram. May that be the first of many more.